welcome to my channel for another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be working on my Subaru. My Subaru is was well, originally a 2002 WRX. At this point, um, it's quite modified. Not much remains from what came from the factory other than the body. Uh, it's got an EJ207 uh, engine. Uh, it's a JDM import uh, from a Spec C with the original uh, ECU and uh, many other modifications, including a uh, an STI 2007 STI uh, six-speed uh, gearbox and uh, matching drivetrain. So on this uh, car, on the uh, WRX, I have to change the fuel tank. Um, the reason for which I have to change the fuel tank is that when it's full, it leaks a little bit. Turns out that the leak is because there was a rust pore in the filler neck which was brazed to the tank from the factory. The car is already jacked up and um, on jack stands. And um, I've taken out the exhaust, center section and uh, back section. The shield where the flange of the drive shaft and enters the rear differential. The bolts of uh, uh, the drive shaft to the rear differential. The heat shield uh, underneath the drive shaft. And the drive shaft in my case it's a uh, carbon fiber drive shaft and here's one else first thing that I did is loosen the bolts that hold the differential with the outrigger and remove the ones on the side it is good enough like this it'll hold it'll hold the differential up even without the rear outrigger, the differential will stay up, um, but you should support it at that point. Um, what I'm gonna do next is remove um, the mounting of the outriggers. Those um, two uh, 10 millimeter uh, bolts, 10 millimeter wrench bolts. You should take a video of the position of the rear bolts as these affect the rear toe prior to removing them. See, uh, the rear bolts have uh, markers on them. I'm talking about the bolts of the um, of the rear lateral links. They affect the rear toe, and there are marks on the housing in this area. So you should uh, note the position. There's also a hole which clearly marks the position. Um, as compared with the uh, notch in the uh, in the cross member, in the rear cross member. With the differential now supported, it is time to remove the four nuts from the outrigger support. Uh, the differential is now disconnected. Uh, the temperature sensor and the ground are disconnected. Next, you have to remove the uh, uh, nuts from the uh, rear differential top where it goes through the mount and uh, this is what hangs the differential up. Now, what you have to do is get the stud out of the differential housing. So in other words, you have to double nut the loose end of the stud. So leave the nuts alone that are in there, add another set of nuts, tighten them up and then remove the studs. Now the differential can just come down. As you begin to lower the differential, the housing of the um, outrigger begins to wedge itself against the differential. There are some studs which come from the top and they go to the bottom. You have some plates which retain them at the top. So you got to use a pry bar and make sure they, they don't stay stuck, they don't stay jammed. And this way, um, this can happen smoothly. With the differential now having dropped, uh, now the bolt head from the rear, from the rear lateral link, can slide out and on top of the boot of the axle. So now there's room for that bolt to come out. 
for the uh, bolt that has the ad adjustment of the toe, which is the rear lateral link bolt. There are lots and lots of wash washers. Here's what's at the back. There's a knot, there's a thick washer. And then there is a washer that has, has uh, signs on it, alignment signs. And obviously the way this washer is installed is with the signs at the top. So you gotta look for, for these, these, uh, these signs and face this, this washer to where these lines can be read and then the other face is down and then on top of it there's this thick washer and then on top of that there is the nut now on the other side as we pull the bolt out there's really nothing on the other side Here's a one-man solution for how to pop the axles out of the rear differential. So you need a pry bar, boom, like this. You're gonna, once the um, two lateral links are out, the wheel can move out. There's nothing holding the wheel in. So put your foot on the wheel, push it out. As you push it out with one, with a foot, get the pry bar like this, wedge against the bolt, Put it against the inner surface of the joint. Now watch how I'm not touching the bearing area. I'm not touching the seal area. I'm not touching the cup. Those are very sensitive. They're, they're very skinny steel. If you touch those, you're gonna dent them. You're gonna have problems. Stop short, like I did. Just wedge like this. Have your foot on the wheel. Start pushing with your foot. Start, start wedging like this. For uh, the axles to come out of the differential, once you pop them, you have to lower the differential a lot. So as you lower it, you just got to continue to pay attention to those four bolts from the outrigger so they don't get wedged. But uh, you know, once uh, once it is at this level, it's like uh, roughly off the foot, uh, well, a foot off the ground. Then at that point, uh, grab uh, one of the uh, joint housings. Like for instance the passenger side one with both hands and just yank it out and try and press the, um, the um, holder for the transmission with your foot in the opposite direction you know you can't do any prying when you get the joint out of the differential because there were, there's a very sensitive oil ring in the side of the differential so you gotta get the axle out of the differential nicely without marring that um, that oil seal. Once one side is out, one uh, of the axles is out of the differential, then it's easy to carefully uh, just uh, move the differential in that direction and kind of move the dolly with the differential in this direction. And then the other axle will nicely pop out without damaging anything. At this point of the differential out, I can, um, I can take easily out both the uh, subframe, four bolts, and the remaining two bolts of the outrigger, which I will then slide underneath the uh, uh, parking brake cable, parking brake cables. At this point, both the uh, subframe and the outrigger are out. The four bolts, one, two, and on the other side, three and four are all uh, loosened up uh, also i removed the clamps of the uh, filler neck in my case uh, the tube of the filler neck is brand new i replaced it trying to fix this um, gas leak which turns out to be the gas tank and now i'm gonna worry about this pipe here i'm probably gonna take the clamp off over there and trying to separate the hose over there uh, then these hoses which go all the way deep in there I'm not sure where I'm going to disconnect them so I'm going to take my transmission support and I'm going to put it under the gas tank and I'm going to take these straps off and I'm going to gradually lower the gas tank easy little by little At this point because the gasoline work begins I'm going to disconnect the battery
with the um, information from the factory repair manual, factory service manual. So I've removed the uh, uh, the seating cushion uh, on on the rear bench, and I'm following with their instructions. They're talking about uh, supporting the gas tank with the transmission jack, which is exactly what I was gonna do. And right now, looking for the connector and to disconnect disconnect the connector. So I had to disconnect these two connectors and this grommet the instructions tell me to push it in just finished pushing the grommet in and pushing the connectors through the hole uh, breather hoses to the um to the the breather uh, box to the uh charcoal the charcoal box um so this this is a plastic box which has plastic nipples which are 20 years old and these are rubber hoses which are sitting over the plastic also 20 years old so here you gotta take at least five minutes to do this work and you gotta have a plan and you have to have technique and the plan is gonna be obviously once you take these clamps out to try a six millimeter socket then you have to push the rubber out with a flat screwdriver by wedging against the face of the plastic box gently so as not to crack that brittle plastic and then try your best to twist the rubber hose a little bit to break the seal same here and uh, so far so good then the next thing which i had to do is to disconnect the purge valve which is there it had to be disconnected i also loosen the clamp there's a there's a zip tie but subaru style which can be loosened which is over there they said in the factory manual so after disconnecting the hoses, disconnecting that connector from the uh, from the purge valve, the connector is clamped to that clamp there. To get to that clamp, otherwise the harness is not going to come out and it's going to get stuck. You have to uh, drop the canister, the charcoal canister. To drop the charcoal canister, you got some more of these uh, nuts and bolts which are stuck. Uh, three of the four came out for me. But that's enough for me to see that clamp so i'm gonna try to uh, see if the clamp wants to come out if not i'll have to break it and then the warning harness uh, is gonna come out there's one more problem with this hose here there's a t over there there's a metal t um i don't know i'm gonna try to either maybe disconnect the hose there or see if i can get the small uh, hose out of the t then that hose can come out i think i'm ready on this side so there was this clamp, which put up a fight. It was difficult to get up. There was two connectors. The second one appeared at the last minute. The book only mentioned one, but there's two. And there's the T here, which wasn't mentioned. So I got them to where they're hanging, moving to the front side of the tank. There's a hose in there. I didn't really uh, release the uh, fuel pressure so uh, I'm gonna do this here under the hood this way I don't get dust under the car before moving to the front hoses of the gas tank which are the pressure hoses at this point all the hoses are disconnected and the tank is supported I'm getting ready to remove the uh, the four bolts and start uh, lowering the tank uh, so far the most annoying has been one of the three hoses which is located uh, in the driver's side in the driver's side area so there's a quick disconnect that you want to lubricate the WD-40 carefully squeeze the two orange clips and then uh, try and gently twist the plastic portion it'll come out then there is a upper regular rubber hose marked with blue color that'll come off easy and then there's underneath a white marked uh, regular rubber hose which has a problem coming out um, the good news is that not much fuel is dropping either from the tank nor from the engine side so ready to do the work it, the tank the whole tank is out a um, couple of small things which it did uh, once I had it jacked up and uh, I was lowering it after removing the bolts 
it kept tilting towards tilting down towards the passenger side like it was jamming on the driver's side like there was something wrong there no it's not jamming it's so much heavier on the passenger side that when you lower it it wants to just tilt down on that side so just support it i'm one guy i'm doing this alone i was able to support it and just uh slide it more or less sideways out with a jack now i'm gonna start the, the rebuilding process because subaru um, sold me a complete gas tank now i understand that a complete gas tank doesn't include the pump nor doesn't include the jet pump but this is not a complete gas tank this is a bare gas tank so all the sensors all the hoses have to come from the old one to the new one i'm already looking at some of these clamps and i'm not liking them so all the items from the uh, old tank have to be transferred to the new tank and there were some changes in uh, the design of the replacement oem tank for the one that came from the factory with the car um, one of the changes was that this plate here this protective plate now is only held by two studs not by four so that's a good thing if the uh, other two nuts got stuck and they snapped off from the previous uh, application um, the way to do this is uh, you shouldn't have to take out every single hose from every single sensor so this sensor this sensor they can stay together on their hoses so all you have to do is just take these clips and then move them together with everything um, so is the case with uh, this riser of conduits they can come out together and they can go in together um, not unplugging hoses obviously is a better thing uh, less chances for a hose to break which would be problematic um, this here the um, jet pump has to be transferred and those two sensors and the, then there's another one in the middle um, then there are these uh, rubber plates the so-called uh, uh, complete tank that you're buying is a better tank actually so these rubber plates are important because they prevent the body of the car rubbing through the tank. So they have to uh, be transferred from the old tank. Uh, the the um, straps also have some uh, plastic shields. They have to come in as well. Um, and then most importantly, I discovered there is a, uh, I think an anti-siphon valve um i'm not sure exactly what it is nothing mentions exactly what this is and it's inside the old tank and it has to be transferred to the new tank so it goes in such as so it goes into the tube the filler tube slides onto it and then there is uh, one clip which is included with it which has to be on that hole over there. Here we go. So this looks like. So now it's ready to go. We can put the pump back in and uh, close it up and, uh, and put it up.